the show must go on is a familiar expression in the world of entertainment. But does it hold up when a pandemic threatens a summertime tradition? Our cover story is reported by Lee Cowan. There is a creature alive today who has survived millions of years of evolution. It was the summer of 1975 when beating the heat was all about going to the movies. One movie in particular. Jaws. With Jaws, the summer blockbuster was born. This summer was slated to be a real sizzler of nostalgia. Top Gun Maverick was supposed to fly into theaters again in the summer. It's one of life's mysteries, sir. But it didn't. So was the latest Ghostbusters adventure. He has a gunner seat? Ghostbusters Afterlife. COVID-19 pushed back both those summer releases. Oh, killer replica. Making 2020 the summer of silence at the box office. Our industry was one of the first to be hit as a result of the way we work. We will be probably one of the last industries to come back. Gabrielle Carteris is president of SAG-AFTRA, just one of the Hollywood unions figuring out safety protocols to get the cameras rolling again. There's a lot of anxiety. People want to do it right away, but we keep saying, let's look at the research because you don't get to hit the ball twice. We want to do it right the first time. More than 200,000 jobs were lost in the motion picture and sound recording industries in April alone. Workers who would have otherwise been flooding sound stages and sets. The not so glitzy reality of an industry that makes social distancing difficult at best. Something Carteris knows all too well after starring in 90210, both the 90s version and the recent reboot. Complete adoration and then utter shock that I'm a grandmother, okay? Can you imagine that kind of a shoot being done anytime soon? It would have been a different, different show. And it would be a different experience for you as an actress. Oh, it's already, I just don't even know what my world's going to look like when I go back. I'm going to close my window to get the noise out. Hold on. It certainly can't look like this. This on the screen? <laughs> good to see you there, Lee. <laughs> You're looking good, but... It's awful. I'd rather be there with you in person. But let me tell you something, I cannot wait to get the hell out of this room. <laughs> That's Tom Rothman, chairman of Sony Pictures Entertainment's Motion Picture Group. I wouldn't necessarily write off the second half of the summer. Yeah. We may try to sneak in a movie or two. The mechanics of shooting again, safely, he says, are largely manageable. There will be best practices put in place. There'll be discussions with the unions. I think it's very doable. What's challenging is what happens on the other side of the camera. There will never be a time, pandemic or not, where the audience does not want the hero to kiss the heroine. You should be kissed and often, and by someone who knows how. But getting sparks to fly instead of droplets of the virus kiss me. Kiss me. <laughs> will indeed require some movie magic. Streaming giant Netflix can me, can me, can me, can me, can me. is already trying. For a long time, people would joke all the time that there's too much on Netflix, but you know, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ted Sarandos, content chief at Netflix, who's seen subscriptions skyrocket during the pandemic. What? <laughs> he says it's already back in production on a supernatural thriller called Katla, now shooting in Iceland. They've been experimenting with color coding to break up the crew. Everyone is tested, and everything, from props to costumes, is sanitized on a regular basis. Do you think that'll slow down production of things? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I kind of think about it as airport protocols post 9-11, you know, certainly slowed things down, but in a way that made people feel comfortable to fly. And it's the same with this. I think so. Although we've been binging at a voracious rate, Tiger King being just an appetizer, Sarando says he's got enough content to last until the end of next year. Literally the first day uh, that we were shut down, we had a pitch meeting with some of the biggest stars in Hollywood uh, pitching a new series. Uh, next and day. The next day. Animated series like Netflix's Big Mouth 
have continued production without missing a beat. What is your current grooming situation, sweetie? I call it the brush. Of the cast, even doing table reads via Zoom. Uh, hold it, hold it, yeah, baby. The interesting side effect of all this might be that the time for stories to marinate, uh, I think actually will be beneficial on the other side of this. If history is any guide, there will be another side to this. It's a boom and bust industry. Emily Carmen is professor of film studies at Chapman University near Los Angeles. I don't know where the industry is going, but I know they will prevail because if you look at the arc of the film industry, the studios find a way to regroup and take advantage of that moment and continue. At the height of the silent movie era, the Spanish flu struck. It even became a plot point in this Mary Pickford film. Watch as she sneezes, and the crowd of mask-wearing train passengers runs away in horror. But that movie was made after the pandemic had already brought Hollywood to its knees. Production was halted, and theaters were closed then, too. Pickford herself became seriously ill, but both she and the movies bounced back. Even the Great Depression, which bankrupted many studios, still gave us some of the most enduring and uplifting films of our time. They're dressed impeccably. They're dancing on these beautiful Art Deco stages, sometimes in exotic locations. It's everything the Depression wasn't. Exactly. And for 90 minutes to two hours, you forgot where you were. Hollywood has provided an escape through all sorts of calamities before. Will it be rough going for a while? Almost certainly. But those at the top of the movie food chain say don't count the movies out yet. When television came along, it was like, television, that's the end, it's free. Then video cassettes came along. Well, that's the end. And then 300 cable channels. Well, that's the end. That this is <laughs> No, it's not the end. It isn't the end. There is no end. That experience of being with other people and laughing and crying and cheering, that's what makes us who we are.